Hello everybody, I'm uh, Howie I'm from Dean Castle Country Park and today we are going to do, I think with this, uh, with the weather today, it's not all um, sunshine and heat, um, so a soup is a good idea. And we're going to use um, some, well a plant I really associate, I think everybody will associate this plant, come into camera again, come into shot, with Dean Castle Country Park and it is wild garlic and amongst them there are a few flower buds. The flowers, when they do come up, will be beautiful little um, star, white pet um, six petaled um, flowers. Another plant we're going to put in the soup to give it a bit of zing will be the much maligned nettle. And of course I don't have to show you nettles close up, you know all about those. Um, what we're going to do, of course, um, Let's get a bit of butter in our pan. So just a, a chunk of about that size. Nice and healthy. And then let's hope, <laughs> let's hope our outdoor burner doesn't let us down. There we are. That's us. Our butter should be melting away now. Just a few things to say. Um, obviously you're thinking, oh, Am I allowed to pick these plants in the wild? Well, there's an act, almost as old as me, from 1981, the Wildlife and Countryside Act. All it prohibits you from doing, it prohibits you from lifting you know, the whole plant. Don't uproot the plant. You're allowed to take the leaves, just take what you need though. For this soup, all we're looking at are two sort of handfuls of wild garlic. Two, oh, I'm being brave here. Two handfuls of nettles. And nettles are an amazing plant, they're um, packed full of vitamins A, vitamin C, um, also very, very useful. Um, during the war they used these, the dye colour from them, um, to dye the camouflage netting. Right, my butter is starting to melt. See if I can turn this up any further. Then what you do is you take your two handfuls, one, two of nettles, what you can do, you can chop these up. Um, my colleague Christine's going to be chopping some up finally later on, but what I can do is just tear these into the pot. Again, about two handfuls of the wild garlic. You can throw these into salads as well. Um, they're not as strong as the, sort of the, uh, the bulbs of garlic you would buy in the supermarket. Um, with nettles, you can use nettles for pretty much anything. You would use spinach course, apart from salad, raw nettles is a no-no, but when you cook them, it takes that sting away. We're starting to get a sizzle here, don't know if you can hear that. And it'll wilt down much the same way as spinach would. And the smell is fantastic. That's wilting down. Then what I've done is you'll take, you need a thickener really. You could make a very, very kind of rustic nettle soup with just your kind of your plants, water, salt and pepper, but a potato is an ideal thickener. So I've chopped these pretty small so it shouldn't take long for them to sort of boil off. Throw them in, that's about a couple of medium sized potatoes. In they go. You can also, in one of the books, I haven't tried it yet, you can use celeriac as a thickener and people if you mention celeriac people just laugh at you usually um, so potatoes will do just fine let them cook for just a wee minute what i've got here of course is nothing fancy it's just some veg stock cubes you could use other stock cubes i'm using veg because in that way you can just you can offer this soup to everyone they suggest or should i say richard maybe a uh, great famous food forager suggests um, a litre of stock. You look at the packet of the stock, I think they just want you to use more stock cubes. Um, they suggest five cubes for a litre. I've only used three. I don't want it to overtake the, the, sort of the taste of the nettles and the wild garlic. So I'm going to add maybe about 800 millilitres of this. Save a wee bit. Because I don't want my soup to be too sort of runny and if it's too thick you can just put the stock in later. Just 
give that a stir. Get the lid on it. Hello again. Um, yes, I have finished with the soup. It just takes about 20 minutes to half an hour to sort of boil down, get the potatoes soft. And I'll bring it over here to show you more closely. It's not the most appealing looking at the moment, but once we've blended it, um, it will become a nicer colour and also a far nicer um, texture to eat. And I've also, you've noticed maybe on the, the desk there, we've got some creme fraiche, which is a, a lovely wee addition. A wee splodge of that on top, sour cream. One potato just hanging on there. Always one. Okay. The moment of truth. I'll pour some into a bowl here. There we are. You'll notice what I've done is I've kept some of that stock back. So if we hadn't got the balance with the sort of the thickener, the potato exactly right, we could have put in some more stock. You can add salt and pepper to taste. We dotted this on top, and there we have it: wild garlic and nettle soup. Got my spoon here, swirling that cream. Oh yes, yes, that's good. Yeah. Maybe a wee touch of salt. Does it need some wild garlic bread on the side? How are we, what do you reckon? <laughs> yes, the wild garlic bread is lovely, but just another wee taste. You can even garnish with a wee bit of fresh garlic on the top. Mm -hmm. And as I think Christine mentioned in another video, uh, yeah, you could even garnish with one wee wild garlic flour when they do come out, when they do appear. But uh, thank you very much. I hope you have a go at making this. Um, if you come up with a, a total different take on it, if you tried the celeriac that I mentioned earlier, tell us all about it. Thank you very much.